This is Tracking the Tropics. Tropical Storm Fred nearing landfall in the Dominican Republic at this hour. It's expected to weaken in that area before reorganizing, re-intensifying towards the United States. A live meteorologist Q&A starts now here on Tracking the Tropics. Hey there, folks. J.B. Buno here with you live in your hurricane headquarters. Another edition here of Tracking the Tropics as we're great, so grateful to have, of course, wavy Meteorologist Steve Fondero joining us from Norfolk, Virginia there in the bottom right-hand portion of your screen. We're really looking forward to getting Steve involved here as we continue to monitor Tropical Storm Fred. Of course, we have Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Ian Oliver standing by as well. You can use any of the hashtags that you see here on your screen to ask a question to one of our meteorologists while we're here live across social, social media platforms across the southeastern United States. But let's send things over to meteorologist Amanda Holly standing by with the very latest. You can use hashtag Hey Amanda in the Facebook Live comment section if you have a question for Amanda. The 2 o'clock advisory just coming in a moment ago, Amanda. Yeah, 2 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center is in, and I'll say it's been very uneventful the past several hours. Uh, the biggest thing that has happened really in the past 24 hours is that it actually got its name Fred. We've been calling it Fred to be for the past several days. Well, last night at 11 p.m., it had that close center of circulation. So now we're talking about Tropical Storm Fred, and it did have maximum sustained winds at 45 miles per hour because it got a little bit more organized, but that's going to be short-lived. Now, before I move on to the next graphic, I do want to show you we are tracking something else in the tropics. I will get to that in just a few minutes, but obviously that's way out in the Atlantic and uh, our, our, our eyes at this moment are on Tropical Storm Fred, which currently still has maximum sustained winds at 45 miles per hour. But as JB said, it is making its way on shore right now on the island, the very mountainous island of Hispaniola. The Dominican Republic there has mountaintops about 10,000 feet, which is going to disrupt the circulation. Ever since the sun rose this morning, the system hasn't looked all that impressive. But we did see a couple bursts of convection near the center, which allowed that maximum sustained wind to go from 40 to 45. But over the next 12 to 18 hours, I'm expecting that to drop because of it moving over this mountainous island here. But you can see there's some showers and thunderstorms right near the center. But there's also these showers and thunderstorms kind of dying off as they drift off to the south. It doesn't really look that healthy right now on infrared satellite. This is visible satellite also. We're just seeing the main shower and thunderstorm activity kind of right near the center as it moves ashore. Keep in mind, there's a big mountain range right here. So all, as that moisture makes its way on shore, the air is actually being shoved upward because of the mountains. So that's what's helping to produce those showers and thunderstorms right now. But as we get into the afternoon hours and into the evening hours, we're really going to see that activity shut off because of the disruption of the mountains. So that's some good news because we hope that the mountains are going to tear it apart as much as possible so that it has to it has to regain more strength on the other side of that. We're going to know a lot more by 8 a.m. on Thursday. It is expected to drop to a tropical depression here, but we need to see what kind of shape it's in after it passes all of these mountain ranges and exactly where it emerges. If it's a little bit farther to the north or a little bit farther to the south, it's going to make all the difference because if it tracks a little bit more toward Cuba, well, it's got more mountain ranges to interact with. So the next 24 hours will be key for Fred to determine kind of the long range impacts that we're going to see here, potentially in Florida and maybe along the northern Gulf Coast. But as we look ahead to the next three days, we're talking about Friday and in through early Saturday. We've got a long ways to go yet. Uh, it's going to continue to make its trek close to the Caribbean islands here and then possibly into the Florida Straits. Maybe the center at that point is over the peninsula. Maybe it's just off the Tampa Bay coastline and maybe it's still way out here in the Gulf of Mexico. So several different scenarios certainly still possible at this point because, well, we're still about four to five days away from that happening. So a lot can change, but there's the cone. This didn't change much at 11 a.m. That is when it was updated and the National Hurricane Center noted that it didn't really make any changes because the forecast thinking is still the same. The models generally agree on this general motion as we get towards Saturday morning, but again, they look in good consensus, but it's going to make all the difference if it stays just to the north of Cuba. It's going to be able to hold that strength a little bit more. If it's just to the south here, it's going to run over all of these mountains and it's going to have it's going to be disrupted just like it is right now over the mountain mountainous terrain there of the Dominican Republic. So, all of these factors are going to make a big difference in the 
long run by the time we get to Saturday and into Sunday. After that, yeah, the models do spread out just a little bit here. And again, all of these different scenarios mean hugely different impacts to the Tampa Bay area and even for the panhandle, because if it's farther out in the Gulf of Mexico here, we're probably going to be talking about a stronger tropical storm, maybe even a weak category one storm. I do want to bring in Steve here really quick because we haven't seen a whole lot of shift in the models over the past 24 hours, maybe though a little bit farther out in the Gulf of Mexico, Steve, which could lead to a little bit stronger of a storm. What are your thoughts on that? Hey Amanda, I'm glad you brought in the uh, spaghetti models here because I love talking about spaghetti models because I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with them. They could be yes. very, very helpful, but at the same time, they could be very, very, very confusing and misleading because there's so many squiggly lines all over the place. But what they're really good at is identifying trends. And the general trend, what you've been showing, is that northwest motion. And then a little bit less of a, a turn to the north and more of a motion into the Gulf of Mexico. So maybe a little bit over some warmer waters, which you had just mentioned could indicate a stronger system as it gets into the Gulf because water temperatures there and they, we're talking mid to upper 80s near 90 degrees. So um, we like to see spaghetti models really, really close together because that just tells us all of the tools in the toolbox that we're using to forecast these systems beyond four, five, six days are in good agreement. When everything's in good agreement, you could build whatever you're building very well. We could build the forecast very well. We get an idea of where it's going. When you start to see them spread out a little bit, that's where the uncertainty comes in. That's where the question marks come in. So there still is that question mark once we get to uh, this weekend when the system is approaching, when Fred's approaching the Florida Straits. Uh, how much of a turn is it going to take to the north? Is it going to continue to head pretty much into the Gulf of Mexico? Is it going to stay way down to the south? So I would like to see these spaghetti models come a little bit closer together as we approach the weekend, which they should. And we'll see how this thing shapes up. And then, as you said, by tomorrow morning, we'll get a really good indication of what shape it's in before it interacts with Cuba. Yeah, we're really going to know where that center starts to reform on the other side of Hispaniola, and that'll help these forecast models out a good bit. So again, 24 hours from now, we'll have a good amount more information for you, but we're still going to be tracking, you know, exactly how far off of the coastline is it going to be, or is it still going to be over the peninsula? Things that we're going to continue to watch as we head into the next five days. This particular model forecast winds really doesn't have it regaining that circulation. This particular model is the GFS the American model doesn't really, ha really have it regaining that circular uh, motion until it makes its way into the Florida Straits and maybe even into the Gulf of Mexico. And even after that, this one particular run actually keeps it right along the coastline, which wouldn't be a terrible scenario for the Tampa Bay area. I know you may be seeing that, you know, center of circulation nearby, but the land interaction would keep this much weaker. So it wouldn't be anything that we haven't seen before we couldn't handle. But if it was farther out in the Gulf of Mexico, it is going to be able to get a little bit stronger before potentially impacting the panhandle. So if you live in the panhandle, you're very much in the cone of uncertainty and you definitely should be paying attention over the next several days on these trends and where the forecast takes it. So this is a look at the tropical moisture we've been showing it the past few days because it's a big factor. There's a lot of dry air surrounding this storm. This particular model, this particular uh, view here, if you will, doesn't really show it, but there is some dry air really trying to make its way toward the center, which is also keeping it a little bit weaker. Again, good news for us. But the one bad thing is, is if the path of the center of the storm stays over water, water's plenty warm enough. It's August, plenty warm enough for that tropical development. So it is going to be able to feed off of it, especially if it stays on the left side of this cone. And again, north of uh, Cuba there that's going to be able to feed off of those warmer waters and get a little bit more reorganized. So just bear in mind that even though we're not, we're not talking about a potentially very strong system, uh, I do think that a lot of the shower thunderstorm activity, similar to the past few storms that we've seen, it's all going to be on that eastern side. So even if the center of the storm is out in the Gulf of Mexico, I think for now, at least if it's if it's close enough, uh, we will see some of those tropical bands kind of make their way through the Tampa Bay area. And then, of course, depending on how strong it will be, will depend on those impacts for the panhandle. And, of course, again, we're going to continue to keep an eye on that moving forward. Now, uh, Max Defender 8 radar, not tra tracking any tropical moisture at this point, but it is going to be a really helpful tool moving into this weekend, especially if it's a little bit closer to our coastline, just like what we saw with Ada and Elsa. We're going to be able to use Max Defender 8 radar to see into the core of uh, whatever Fred is at this point as it's moving by. So right now we're just tracking some of those thunderstorms developing in Highlands County, moving into eastern portions of Polk County, and we're going to be dealing 
here in Tampa Bay with our own round of thunderstorms this afternoon. A couple of them could be on the strong side, so keep that in mind. And lastly, I will leave you guys with this. Yes, another tropical wave has a medium chance of developing over the next five days. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple more waves come off the coast of Africa over the next couple of days. It's August, and this is the time of year that we expect these storms to form and uh, march across <laughs> the Atlantic. Guys. Meteorologist Amanda Holly with the latest on the 2 o'clock advisory here. Back with you, everybody, here in your hurricane headquarters. Again, great to have Wavy Meteorologist Steve Fundero joining us from Norfolk, Virginia. Also, of course, tracking the tropics, Meteorologist Ian Oliver uh, standing by here to answer your questions here, folks. As you can see, or as you just saw there in the bottom portion of your screen, we've activated the Meteorologist Q&A. So you can use hashtag hey Steve, hashtag hey Ian, any of the hashtags we have, JB, Amanda, and we'll get to your questions here to the Facebook Live comment section. Got a lot of different Facebook pages pulled up here so that we can get to as many any of the questions as possible over the next 10 minutes. And uh, we got a lot of, lot of folks uh, giving a shout out some love to Virginia here. Cheryl Lewis, hashtag AJB. Didn't even know this was out there. I'm in Virginia Beach, so I guess I should be watching. Hey, I see Norfolk, Virginia is in the house. And yeah, that's for Steve Fundero joining us from Wavy in Norfolk, Virginia. And the first question coming in for you, Steve, it's from Lori Triplett. Hashtag, hey, Steve, will Norfolk be in the eye of Fred? One of my favorite questions when we're talking about um, hurricanes and tracking the tropics. Uh, this far out, I'm going to say no. And uh, we locally here in Norfolk in the Hampton Roads area, kind of up 90, I-95 from um, Tampa Bay, all the way up the coastline. Uh, I've been saying over our past couple of newscasts, we have no concerns uh, locally here, uh, tropically speaking, at least in the next five to, to seven days. We're going to keep an eye on Fred for sure because of that northerly turn as it kind of makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico by this weekend or near um, the Gulf of Mexico by this weekend. We'll see what it does from there, how far north it goes. Uh, Amanda did mention, um, she mentioned Ada and Elsa. If you remember uh, Elsa, that was a couple of weeks ago, up here in Norfolk, um, in Hampton Roads, we had a, a good bout with some severe weather. We had a, a several tornado warnings. Um, team meteorologists were on air kind of all night covering that. Um, I'm not saying the system will take a similar track to that, but uh, these systems and tropical systems, when they move over land and are on shore, they're not done yet. They don't just go away. The rain is still there. The thunderstorms are still there. So by this weekend, um, you, can, you can catch us on air on Wave News 10. We'll be getting uh, much better details of how this thing ventures up to the north. I think as of now, we're looking at a cooler and wet week next week anyway. So if we do get any enhanced rain from uh, Fred next week, I would say um, it would come with some good graces because this week is pretty hot. We're in the 90s, it feels like 100, 510 degrees out here. So we can use a little bit of rain to cool us off. Packed house here for you on this two o'clock regular edition of Tracking the Tropics here with you in your hurricane headquarters with Ian Oliver, Amanda Holly, myself, and then joining us from Norfolk, Virginia, Steve Fundera there in the bottom right hand portion of your screen. Again, we're looking for your questions in the Facebook Live and also YouTube Live comment section. You can use any of the hashtags here around your screen and we'll get to, of course, your comments. Let's get uh, Ian in here. Uh, Sean Roberts here asking hashtag hey, Ian, will Tropical Storm Fred impact us? this weekend and I guess Ian that really depends on exactly where Sean's joining us from yeah who us is let's uh, we'll assume it's the Tampa Bay area for the time being from the WFLA Facebook but there's a lot to be decided here over the next 24 hours especially Fred has had challenges every step of the way this has never really been a well-formed storm as Amanda pointed out we were waiting days for this just to even by definition become a tropical storm finally did last night but we looked at it on satellite this morning. The dry air was beating this thing up right on its approach to the Dominican Republic, where it's picked essentially the worst path that it could possibly take over Hispaniola. Amanda talked about those mountain ranges. Look at that. It's a straight shot over some of the highest terrain, not only in the Dominican, but in the entire Caribbean. It's Pico Duarte. It's a little bit over 10,000 feet in elevation. So you have a poorly formed storm that's not really equipped to handle that kind of land interaction. So what we see emerge off the north side of Hispaniola, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see. You showed that forecast model, the GFS, with the tropical storm force winds. There was essentially none as it right. re-emerges. And it took a while for it to reorganize. Big time, so that is kind of the question. How long does this take to reorganize and recover from all that land interaction? Not just the land interaction, but also all the dry air that's been, again, kind of beating it up, bullying it over the last 36 hours especially, right. how long does that take? And the longer it takes... The better for us. <laughs> exactly. So, And you also talked about not only this interaction in the short term, 
But we could be talking about a center of circulation that's almost entirely disrupted mm -hmm. and then maybe reforms. Maybe it reforms a little North, bit farther south. Yeah, or south. Right. So if it goes over Cuba, we're talking about... Maybe nothing. <laughs> yeah, meteorological nothing burger for yeah. a few days. The possibility, though, that eventually it reemerges re into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. So that's kind of been my thinking so far this morning. Cautiously optimistic for the Tampa Bay area. A track farther west from us, though, does leave more of the Gulf open for business, which we talked about, very warm water. For the Panhandle. Yeah, the Panhandle be would be a little bit more susceptible mm -hmm. at that point. Let's get to show Neen's comment here. Hashtag, hey, Amanda, how's it looking for the Florida Keys? Rain all next week, perhaps? So next week is um, probably going to be actually seeing much improved conditions. We're actually going to see conditions go downhill in the Keys probably as early as late Friday night. And then it's going to be a very squally, gusty, rainy day on Saturday with conditions improving then on Sunday as this kind of pulls away. Not a very long-lasting event, which is good news. We're talking about it's still moving to the west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. Probably going to see that slow down a little bit here over the next 24 to 36 hours, but then and it probably picks up a little bit more forward motion after that. So not a long lasting event, but Saturday mainly is the, the day for the keys to be kind of on high alert. Yeah, Speaking a wall, big speed bump in the yes. short term. Yeah. Speaking of vacations, cat uh, here, the vacation destination like the keys, cat Jones here, hashtag Hey Steve. Uh, we're going on a cruise to Nassau this weekend. Uh, what are we, what are we looking at? And this is a, a lot of vacationers coming down uh, this way here, Steve. And they have questions like this one. One of those inherent risks whenever you book a cruise in August and September, uh, you it's got to be aware, hey, there's got to be some activity going on. It's just the time of year in August and September when the tropics start to add on up. Uh, the one good news is that this storm is, is pretty much going to stay south of the um, of the Bahamas. And especially by this weekend, you heard Amanda alluding to um uh, Friday into Saturday, Saturday being the day the storm will be impacting the Keys. So it's going to be west of the Bahamas at that point. I mean, you still expect kind of a, a, a windy weekend um, with definitely some tropical downpours um, around. But uh, the the track trending a little bit further to the west away from Bahamas is benefiting that cruise. It depends on where you're going. Are you going where are you leaving from? Are you, you know, are you are you coming south to the to to Nassau? Are you going um flying in there and then moving moving out of there. But uh, I think the weather is, is I'm optimistic for the weather in, in the Bahamas um, while still kind of keeping an eye on, on the tropics. So don't tune it out if you're headed there this week. I, by any means. I was a kid and I got trapped on a cruise uh, while there was a hurricane. Trapped sounds like a terrible <laughs> No, word. you know what though? Here's the thing. Trapped I'm, on a I'm cruise glad. sounds yeah. fun though. Yeah, right? Boo hoo, baby. You run out of water, <laughs> you run out of food. Believe me, it's not as great as it sounds, you guys. That's why, JB, that's why there's rum. That's why there's rum. That, that's, that's it. That's right. That's the only thing you had to drink, they right? They couldn't run out yeah. of that. Where has all the rum gone? <laughs> Where's the rum gone? <laughs> Brandis Atchison here, hashtag HJB. I don't know, uh, maybe Ian, if you want to hop in on this one. Will it affect the Pensacola area into Monday? Yeah, like, like Amanda and I were talking about, wait and see here, because this next 24 to 36 hours is really important. There is the possibility of a track that goes right up the spine or even the west coast of Florida. That keeps it weaker. But for us here in Tampa Bay, a track farther off to the west minimizes the impacts likely because this isn't a big storm we're only looking at tropical storm force winds right now at 60 miles right so again if it tracks 70 miles offshore we could be talking about a possibility here where we don't even see those tropical storm force winds or even wind gusts maybe that's still all on the table at this point but a track farther off to the west keeps it over open water longer so if it does manage to withstand what's really going to be a rough day day and a half ahead and then that traverse very close to or even potentially partially over Cuba, what it emerges when it looks like, what it looks like in the Florida Straits from there, that's going to determine the impacts for Pensacola. So again, if you're in Pensacola, I think antennas are up at this point. You're watching this thing closely. You're taking it seriously. You have a, pl a plan in place in case things, unfortunately, look a little bit more poorly for Pensacola. But at that point, at this point, that's all it is, is watching this for now. And I know that Ian's got to get going because we have uh, to organize our coverage, of course, on WFLE News Channel 8, of course, here in, in Tampa Bay. So we'll let Ian get going here, but we'll spend another five or so minutes, folks, here answering your questions here out of the Facebook Live comments section here on Tracking the Tropics. Get, uh, 
Another question here for Steve. Brandon Seidenberg joining us here. I believe joining us from the Wavy TV 10 Facebook page here. Hashtag Hey Steve. Uh, will Fred be making impacts in northeastern North Carolina? Hey, Brandon. How you doing, man? I know uh, we may be keeping an extra eye on this because of what we dealt with with Elsa. That was uh, not fun a couple of weeks ago. So we'll be keeping a close eye on it. But as of now, I've been saying locally, we have nothing to be concerned about up, up, I, up I-95 with Fred. I think we'll get a much better idea of what kind of rain this may bring for parts of the Mississippi Valley, parts of the eastern United States by the end of the weekend, Sunday night. Monday, we'll get a better idea because by then this system will be interacting with um, land, whether that's up the spine of Florida, whether it's in the Gulf of Mexico, whether it's interacting with the Panhandle, the Gulf Coast, we'll have a better idea of how it's moving into mainland United States, when and how it'll be interacting with the jet stream, and then that will likely um, uh, give us a better idea of how we could see our forecast locally. So I would say don't sweat over this by any means. No, our long range forecasts just kind of have a cooler kind of wet um, week ahead next week. So maybe just Fred gives us a, a little little extra dose of some rain uh, next week to cool us off. Let's uh, get you both. We're getting a lot of questions here out of the Facebook live comment section pertaining to whether or not this could become a cat one hurricane here. Uh, Amanda and, and Steve, let's get both of your perspectives here. Chances of this becoming uh, a category one hurricane before U.S. impacts or at least impacts uh, maybe towards uh, past the Florida Peninsula here if it emerges more into the Gulf of Mexico. I'll just say this. If if we see a storm that, you know, emerges and it looks, you know, a little bit healthier than what we were otherwise expecting, absolutely. Category one, certainly not out of the question. We've seen it with the past couple of storms. I mean, we really see it with almost every storm. The intensity forecast, notoriously, notoriously hard to predict. Uh, even the National Hurricane Center, their error talks about a category above or a category below when we look at the forecast cone. So 8 a.m. Sunday morning, it talks about a 60 mile per hour uh, sustained winds tropical storm there but it's certainly not out of the question for us to see a weak category one storm you see the water temperature steve i mean it's august <laughs> it's certainly not out of the question we're talking bath water down there in yeah. the gulf of mexico mid 80s in spots you know some buoys maybe even reading the upper 80s and we've seen this uh time and time again over open water and then over the past you know couple of years recently we've seen it closer and closer to the land where a strong tropical storm um a kind of disorganized system in 36 hours, you snap your fingers and it's a category one, maybe more than that. It's going stronger and stronger. So it's something just with how much uh, the waters have warmed, how much our atmosphere has warmed over several past you know decades or something. We just can't completely rule it out. So I think for those watching from the panhandle, those watching from uh, the Gulf Coast, and of course, you know, all eyes are up in, in the states of in the state of Florida, really just keep an eye on this one, even though it's getting ripped apart by dry air and shear, even though it's battling the mountainous terrains of the DR and will do so across Cuba. And it may come out of this thing all lopsided and beat up and bruised like Rocky after fighting um, in Rocky four, it could really intensify again. And there's something that's called uh, anchoring. It's like a term. Uh, I was talking to the National Hurricane Center uh, director, Ken Graham, about this a couple of years ago, and he's mentioned it's something they try to kind of battle against anchoring is something where uh, we communicate a message in a forecast. And one of the first pieces that information that goes out is what the public latches onto is what gets stuck in our head. So we are communicating and talking about a storm that is very disorganized, but there is a possibility that, you know, by the time this gets out of the, out of the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico, it could be strengthening and it could be stronging. So it's just a, a really, really hones in on, how things quickly can change in the tropics. And we know that. How yes. many updates, Amanda, come out of the National Hurricane Center a day? The five, the eight, the 11, the two? on repeat. They do. Yep. And that's why we get those updates because they're constantly monitoring. They are flying into the storm. They're using the, the satellites and the ships that are around it to get those um, actual reports of what's going on in and around the storm. Now that it's over land, they're going to be able to, you know, take those measurements a little bit better. And uh, yeah, we're going to continue to do this for three days. We're uh, five days out, four to five days out yet from any, you know, potential major impacts. 
surrounded here by screens, everybody uh, monitoring Facebook pages, uh, YouTube, a lot of different places for questions from you, our audience, wherever you're watching from, on whatever whatever app, website, social media platforms. This is a last call for your hashtag Hey Steve, hashtag Hey JB, or hashtag Hey uh, Amanda questions here. Uh, you saw the one there that just came in from Ashley. How about Lakita Lewis here joining us? Hashtag Hey Steve. Will Miami be impacted? Possible flights delayed. Hey, Lakita, it just depends on when the flight's coming in and leaving. I I mean, I could see some flights being delayed Friday and Saturday, depending on where there are, are those rain bands setting up. I mean, if this thing is way out towards the west and some of those rain bands are barely making it to Fort Myers, then, you know, I, you know the train pilots going in and out of Miami are, are dipping and ducking and dodging those tropical downpours anyway in the summer. So, um I, I think just uh, if you got a flight the earlier, the better on Friday to get out or the later in the weekend on Sunday, if you have the, the option to change it. But now just keep an eye on the forecast. Chris Aaron, hashtag hey Amanda, can we expect history to repeat itself once it gets into the Gulf? And Chris, this is a really ominous question, right? I mean, uh, as far as uh, as far as what it could what could happen here once it uh, reemerges in, in the Gulf. We talk here on Tracking the Tropics quite a bit about the concept of, of rapid intensification. And when, when, when it emerges over those Gulf waters, those warm Gulf waters, Amanda, we always talk about this all the time. Really, anything is within the realm of possibility. But um, what do we say here for the comment here from Chris Aaron? So it really is going to depend on where the center of Fred is as it emerges in the Gulf. So I'm kind of zoomed in on the track here. Uh, remember, the cone of uncertainty, that red shade that you're seeing from the National Hurricane Center, the center of the storm can be anywhere within that cone. And uh, I, I do think that it will be somewhere within that cone by the time we get to Sunday morning. So that's good news, but there's still a wide range of possibilities. If we're talking about a path that uh, takes it over the peninsula of Florida here, the spine, no, we're, we're not going to see any intensification because we know that tropical systems actually get their fuel from the warm water. So we would see a much weaker system. However, if we're talking about the center of the storm, you know, being well off of our coastline, potentially more in the center of the Gulf of Mexico, where the water temperatures are warm, there's really no land interaction. Yes, we could be talking about that uh, process of strengthening a little bit faster because it would have less things impeding it. So it's really going to depend on where the center of the storm is as we get into Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday. So if it's out in the Gulf of Mexico, yes, we're likely going to be talking about a slightly stronger storm. And let's get to this one here from Calvin and Jennifer Ross joining us. Hashtag hey Steve. How much wind and tornadoes can Taylor County, Florida get? Taylor County right there, and correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda, but uh, Taylor County right there in that area where Elsa made landfall there. That's the, that's, uh, Fish Creek and um, and somewhat north of us here in the Tampa Bay area there closer to the Florida Panhandle, right? Yeah, that's in there in our Big Bend region here, kind of a, the corner, if you will. It really is going to depend. It really is going to depend on the track of this thing. Uh, we, we've known and we do know, you know, and hopefully you know, viewers know this as well, that front right quadrant of the storm or really just the right side of a system, the east side of a system tends to be where the worst of the weather is, the worst of the storm surge, the heaviest of the rain, and most of the time, the worst of the severe weather. I mean, it was a case uh, with Elsa here. It was a case with Isaias last year as it came up east um, I-95. There was, you know, countless tornado warnings. Um, so really by then, and we're talking early Monday morning. So today's Wednesday, right? I'm losing track of days. So we're talking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're talking five days out in advance. That is a very, very uh, tough question to answer in specific in specificity, uh, specifically that far out. So really, I think by this weekend, when we get a better idea of, of how far into the Gulf this will be, how close it'll be to the Gulf Coast of Florida, um, if it's up the spine of Florida, if it's way out towards the west, uh, we'll get a better idea of, of some of the um, wind threats and some of the severe weather threats um, once, once we know um, where the center of the storm will be as it's interacting with the Gulf of Mexico. A, a good opportunity for some tropics education here. You know, we, we associate spin-up tornadoes with hurricanes, but our spin-up tornadoes, I'll, I'll put you both up here, 
Are spin-up tornadoes still possible with a system like this one, a tropical storm, perhaps, let's say, on the Florida Peninsula, if this system does stay a bit off our shore here on the Gulf Coast side of Florida? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and we're always usually talking about the threat, the, you know, the largest threat, if you will, for those isolated tornadoes on the right side. We call it the northeastern quadrant of the storm in relation to the direction that it's moving. So even if the center of the storm stays out in the Gulf of Mexico, we'll still kind of be in that area here in the, uh, the west coast of Florida, even in Taylor County, um, and then anywhere to the right of where it makes landfall, having the possibility of those isolated tornadoes. Threats low, if, but, you know, Steve, we always we always have to talk oh yeah. about it. Yeah, and even with an unorganized system, yes. too, if this thing is it's, it's lopsided, you know, I mean, you, you, you could use a water bottle as an example. It's like tipped over on its side. All of the moisture and the rain is going to be on one side of the system, and it could be a totally disorganized storm. It could be totally weak, barely a tropical system. But if all the energy is on one side and you have that a little bit of a spin and rotation, wrapping back into the center of the system miles and miles away, there still is a severe weather threat. So these things are very, very complex. I mean, a tropical cyclone is hundreds and hundreds of thunderstorms reinventing themselves every 45 minutes. So you wonder why they're so fun to forecast. Let's uh, get to one question here before we have to wrap up on this edition of Track in the Tropics. Uh, I'm streaming live to our YouTube audience here as well. I see that we have Ryan, Ruby, Mariko, uh, Adrian, Joshua joining us here also via YouTube. And Ryan asked this question a moment ago uh, via YouTube in the comment section there. I'll have, I'll have both of you uh, address this one. Could our friend Fred surprise us all and become a major strength hurricane before landfall the same way that Charlie did? And you know, it's interesting. I've seen Charlie come up several times, even in this edition of Track in the Tropics. We were talking about Charlie comparisons, uh, people asking about Charlie Amanda in our last episode that we did at 8 o'clock this morning. So uh, a lot of Charlie comments here that we're getting. What do we say here for Ryan's comment off of YouTube? So, uh, again, atmospheric setup a little bit different than, than Charlie was back in 2004 here. So I'm not really expecting that, you know, recurve off to the northeast so much because the latest track, you know, doesn't even show that happening. Right now we're just kind of talking about it rounding the edge of that Bermuda high pressure. Um, you know, but restrengthening wise uh, again, that just all goes back to what shape it is in after Hispaniola and then what shape it's in and exactly where that center is as it emerges in the Gulf, Steve. Yeah, man, I'll just go off what you're saying there. The National Hurricane Center is, I mean, they're, when it comes to track forecasting, when it comes to where these things go, they are on it time and time and time again. Just it's incredible how far the science and how far the forecasting has come. But there still are struggles and there still are difficulty with forecasting the intensity, trying to keep up with how warm the waters are. So uh, in realms of the track, as you mentioned, don't expect that weird all kind of awkward turn. And while we don't expect this thing to really, really, really intensify into something drastic, I wouldn't be surprised, I'll say that, if, if it really does strengthen, if it hangs over the Gulf. So we'll see what happens by the end of the weekend when it gets over the Gulf of Mexico. Great to have our featured meteorologist joining us from Norfolk, Virginia, wavy meteorologist Steve Fundero. Steve, before we let you go here, what are you, you going to be looking for here in the hours and days ahead as we continue to monitor Tropical Storm Fred? I'm going to look for whatever I look for in uh, tracking the tropics, and that's sunshine and surf. Uh, it really depends on the situation, though. No surfer really expected for the from this thing from the up from the east coast. But oh, back to what we were just talking about with Amanda, we're really going to look look for how this thing uh, one is in shape after it interacts with the Caribbean. So headed into the weekend shifts, um, we'll be looking at okay, what's kind of what kind of shape it's in after it interacts with Cuba, and then the the track we'll see how far it takes it into the Gulf of Mexico to then expect any sort of intensification. So that's what I'm going to look out for. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing gets stronger than a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and, and we'll see as we head into the weekend. Again, Wavy 10 meteorologist Steve Fundera joining us here, everybody, on this edition of Tracking the Tropic, tapping into the expertise, experience of meteorologists across the United States here on Tracking the Tropics. And always great to have Tracking the Tropics meteorologists Amanda Holly and Ian Oliver joining us on the program here as well. This has been our regular 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central edition here of Tracking the Tropics on this app, website, social media platform that you're watching on 
right now. We have our regular Wednesday episodes, of course, every Wednesday during the Atlantic hurricane season. But when we have storms form like Tropical Storm Fred, we have additional streams and we are planning additional coverage here for Tropical Storm Fred as it gets a little bit closer to the southeastern United States, most notably, of course, the Florida Peninsula. So we'll be continuing to talk to meteorologists such as Steve there in the bottom right hand portion of your screen. And of course, Amanda, Ian and I will be back for additional episodes in the hours and days ahead here on Tracking the Tropics. So for Steve, Amanda, Ian, I'm JB. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time, folks, on Tracking the Tropics. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics. 